Hi everyone, welcome to our final very Thermomix Christmas cooking lesson and this one is all about how best to use your Christmas leftovers to make delicious Thermomix recipes for you and your family. So I think that you've had a brilliant time the last couple of weeks cooking with Terry and today I'm going to be showing you a slightly more savoury range of recipes than what you've got accustomed to the last few weeks and I really think you're going to love these. One of my personal favourite ways to use up leftover turkey, vegetables and cheese from the Christmas cheese board is to make a lovely lovely bake that goes in the oven, very simple, all in one, bubbles away and comes out a delicious, hearty, warming casserole. So I've got this adorable Christmas baking dish and I'm going to show you a half recipe of this particular recipe because I don't think you need that much food if there are only two of you like there is in my household. So I'm going to use half my portions of everything that the recipe states. This is on Cookie Do. The recipe is leftover turkey and vegetable bake and it could not be any simpler. So we're going in with some leftover roast veg. I've got parsnips and carrots here, but honestly, you can put anything you like in here, Brussels sprouts, bits of red cabbage, really anything, even some roasties would go well. So the recipe states between 300 and 500 grams, and I'm gonna go in with about 250. And then we're going to just top that with our leftover turkey. I've got some lovely turkey breast and we're just going to sprinkle that over there and i know sometimes turkey can dry out especially if it's sort of left in the fridge for a day or two but the best thing you can do is a bake like this because you're going to be adding a lovely thick white sauce at the end over all the ingredients and that will give the turkey some lovely moisture this would work equally well with gammon or any other christmas bird that you choose to make whether it's duck or goose or chicken so delicious turkey pieces have gone in and we're just gonna set that aside for now. So, I've chosen to use some Lancashire cheese, but you can use any cheese from your cheese board that you have left over. A lovely mixture of a few cheeses would be absolutely delicious. And we're just gonna grate that for a few seconds. And we're going to add that to a bowl. And then when it comes to the herbs you use to flavor this bake, you can absolutely use whatever you have left over. I find that after the Christmas season, my fridge is absolutely overflowing with not only cheeses and savory leftovers of cooked food, but also of herbs because I use loads of herbs when it comes to my roast potatoes. There's always some rosemary and thyme in there and especially for stuffing my turkey. So this is a great way to use those herbs. You're just going to want to rinse and dry out your mixing bowl before you chop your herbs. Otherwise, the cheese will cause the herbs to not attach to the blades and cut smoothly. So I'm just gonna rinse this off. So lovely, clean and dry mixing bowl. Dry is also important. Otherwise, again, the herbs won't chop well. And I've just got four large sage leaves. Just gonna roughly tear those up, pop those in. And we're gonna chop those as well for a few seconds. And you can hear when the herbs are catching on the blades. That's the sound you want. If you can't hear any sort of friction against the blades and you just hear the sound of the blade going around and around, then you know that your herbs are not being chopped efficiently. And then you can take a look. We want them chopped quite finely. So we can always give them a few more seconds if we need to. But that looks absolutely fine to me. And that's going to go into the bowl with your grated cheese. And now, we're going to make our white sauce. So I don't know about you, but making a lovely bechamel, mornay, white sauce, whatever you prefer in a Thermomix is one of my favorite ways to use it because it gets that perfectly thick, luxurious, velvety texture without you having to slave away over, over a stove with a wooden spoon or a spatula stirring for ages. So again, very simple recipe. All you need for a classic white sauce is some butter, some flour, and some milk, simple as can be. And then you're just gonna throw all of those into your mixing bowl at once and thicken for about eight minutes until lovely and thick and luxuriously smooth. But before we do that, we're just gonna chop up some onion, which is going to go into our veg bake as well. So just normal white onion. Again, use what you have at hand. If you have red onions, shallots, any of those would work perfectly. And then that's just gonna be scraped out straight into our casserole dish. So onions going out. And at this stage, if your turkey and your vegetables were not liberally seasoned when you originally cooked them, it might be a good idea to sprinkle over some sea salt and crack over some black pepper. 
Obviously, we're also going to season our white sauce, so you will get some flavor from there as well. But my top advice is always to season at every stage of cooking, because then you shouldn't really need to season once you serve. I say that, but I notoriously have, notoriously have an incredibly salty palate and tend to add salt to everything, which is not good. But it does make me very conscious of seasoning my food generously when I cook. So there we go. And we're just going to rinse out our mixing bowl and make our white sauce. First of all, I have my oven preheated to 180 degrees, ready to bake our lovely dish. But first, white sauce. So always equal amounts of flour and butter. So however much flour or butter you have, just make sure you have an equal amount of the other. And then my milk. I always think whole milk is best for white sauce. That's how you get the most rich, the most creamy, luxurious result. And for this amount, because it's not a huge amount, we're just gonna cook it for six minutes at 90 degrees. And we're going to cook it at speed four because you want that butter and that flour to incorporate evenly and smoothly. So I'll see you in six minutes. So we've lovely white sauce cooked here, ready to go. And now what we're going to do is add in our reserved grated cheese and sage. And we're just gonna mix that in at a nice low speed until it's beautifully incorporated for about two minutes. And that's how you make sure that your cheese is evenly melted throughout your sauce. You can obviously do this by hand using your spatula, but this is much simpler and it leaves you free to do anything else you need to do, like preheat your oven to 180 if you haven't done that yet. Mine is ready to go. My casserole dish is loaded up. I just need to drape my beautiful sauce over the top and garnish with some breadcrumbs and some thyme leaves. And then we're going to bake it for 30 minutes. So our lovely, cheesy, sagey sauce is ready. And we're now just going to generously pour it over our bake. It smells divine. You might think that after a heavy few days of Christmas feasting, you might not be up for this kind of rich, decadent dish, but there's always more room in the belly for a Christmas leftover feast. So perfect amount of sauce. And now I'm just going to sprinkle over my breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs could not be any easier to make in a Thermomix. If you haven't done it before, just grab a couple slices of bread, roughly tear it into pieces, pop them into your mixing bowl and blitz them up at about speed 10 for about a minute, depending on how much bread you've got in there. And then you can put those into lovely airtight containers and keep them for up to a month. So you have breadcrumbs ready to go at short notice. So breadcrumbs and some fresh thyme. Again, substitute for any herbs that you have handy. You just want a couple of leaves, not too many, but we'll do a few more. There we go. And top with a little sprinkle of sea salt a little bit of black pepper, and then into the oven at 180 for 30 minutes. And it should come out beautifully bubbling, slightly golden. Your breadcrumbs will definitely be golden. And then make sure to leave it to stand outside of the oven for about 10 minutes before tucking in, because otherwise you may very well scold your mouth on that decadent cheesy sauce. So I'm gonna have a little clear down and then we're going to make a gammon and broccoli pasta bake. That is my personal favorite Christmas leftover recipe. Our delicious turkey, cheesy leftover veg bake is ready. And we've got Laura here who's kindly volunteered to be our taste tester for this dish. Laura, please come on. Hello. Grab a fork. Make sure you're facing the camera so they can see your reaction. Oh, it's delicious. Mmm, that is delicious. It's not as heavy as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, really nice. Really nice? Will you be having a portion later when I bring it off camera? Please. You're Please. very welcome. Thank, Thank you so much for tasting. So we're back to make my favorite pasta bake, which is a gammon and broccoli cheesy pasta bake. It is as delicious as it sounds. And it's also got that sort of added healthy kick from the broccoli. And again, because this is a Christmas leftovers video, I would recommend that you use any other veg you happen to have left over. Brussels sprouts would work beautifully here, as would any kind of leafy dark green. So going in with our Gruyere cheese, again, Christmas leftover cheese, any cheese you have on hand can go into a cheesy sauce. So let your imagination run wild. And we're just gonna grate this and transfer it to a little bowl. 
I'm going to be using penne today as my pasta of choice, but any sort of short pasta will do. Farfalle, garganelli, brilliant. So you can also use a combination of cheeses here. I like a cheddar and parmesan blend myself when I don't have gruyere on hand. And now we're going to go in with our water for our pasta. So water's going in. I'm choosing not to rinse out my mixing bowl at this stage as I don't think those few bits of cheese will do any harm to our pasta while it cooks. Going in with some olive oil and a healthy pinch of sea salt. I always stick by the age old advice that any pasta cooking water should be as salty as the sea because that's actually where your flavor should come from in a pasta dish. If you cook your pasta and you have good quality pasta and you cook it well in well seasoned water, that will add all of the salt you need and then you can pair it with a more subtle sauce and you'll have a beautifully balanced seasoning. So that's going to go on and we're just going to boil it for about 10 or 11 minutes and we want that to be scalding hot, bubbling away, 100 degrees and speed one should be fine and I'll see you when the water's boiling. So our water's boiling and we're going to go straight in with our pasta, going for about 300 grams. Again, this is a really good recipe that you could have if you don't have enough ingredients or you don't have that many people to feed. Though I often make the full recipe of this one in particular and then freeze it in portions because it is a delicious recipe to reheat and enjoy at another time. So pasta's in. We're now going to pop our aroma dish on top of our mixing bowl and our broccoli is going to go into there. So the important thing about any leftover veg you use for this recipe is that they either need to be raw if you're planning to steam them on top of the pasta while it cooks or if they're cooked you skip this stage and you just cook your pasta and add the veg at the end when you mix everything together. So this is now going to be cooked and for about seven minutes and on Veroma, speed one. And I'll see you when that's done. Our broccoli is cooked and our pasta is cooked. Now what we're going to do is, clever trick, if you are steaming veg above your pasta or grain and they are going to be combined, you can drain your pasta directly through your Veroma dish with your broccoli in it or whatever other veg it is and have them in there together to hold until you need to use them. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back and we'll start to assemble our casserole pasta bake before we make our white sauce. So I've drained our pasta. I always slightly undercook my pasta for a pasta bake because it does continue to cook in the oven in whatever sauce you're cooking in. So today it's a lovely cheesy white sauce, but whatever sauce you're cooking a pasta bake in will be absorbed by that pasta while it bakes and cook it further. So you don't want it to already be quite, you know, well cooked, a little bit mushy before it even goes into bake because then it'll just be a mushy mess that often just disintegrates. So we've gone for something that's even a little bit less than al dente and it's gone into my Rockstar Anna baking dish. And now we're going to make our white sauce. So I'm just gonna give my mixing bowl a quick clean and then we'll come back and make that sauce. We're going to make a classic Mornay sauce to go with this pasta bake. And all that means is we're going to do a white sauce which has the Gruyere cheese folded through it and some Dijon mustard as well. So very similar process to the white sauce that we made for our turkey bake, except we're going to melt our butter first. So butter's going in and we're just going to melt that for about three minutes. Butter is melted, now we're going to go in with our flour and cook it again. And what we're doing at this stage is creating our roux. And a roux is very simply your flour and butter mixture, which you cook out to various color stages. So it could be blonde, it could be golden, it could be brown. And each color stage brings more and more flavor, like a bigger depth of flavor, you could say. So we're just going to cook this for three minutes. We want sort of a blonde roux. We're not looking for too much of that sort of toasted butter flavor. And then we're going to add in our milk, our Dijon mustard, a little bit of salt and pepper and cook that out until it's lovely and thick. And we're going to finish it off with our grated Gruyere cheese before draping it over our pasta bake along with our gammon. I've sprinkled my chopped up gammon over my pasta and broccoli in my baking dish. I've now made my roux, which is looking lovely. And now just make sure all those bits of flour that might come up the side of the mixing bowl are evenly incorporated. And now we're going to go in with our milk. So again, highly recommend using whole milk 
for your white sauces for that extra rich creamy flavor and texture. Going in with my teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Don't waste any of that, it brings so much lovely flavor. And we're just going to season with a bit of salt and pepper and then we're just gonna cook that for about six minutes until lovely and thick. And then we're going to add in our grated Gruyere cheese. So I will see you once our sauce is ready to go into the pasta bake. Brilliant, so our sauce is ready. It looks beautiful and thick. And now I'm going to go in with my Gruyere cheese and we're just gonna slowly mix that in for about two minutes at a nice low speed, exactly like we did for the turkey bake white sauce and then we can put it all together. Now all that's left to do is to pour our sauce over our pasta bake, and then you can top it with breadcrumbs or a bit more grated cheese of your choice if you want to, but I think it is perfect just the way it is. Just make sure that you cover every inch of that pasta bake with the sauce. Don't want any of this gorgeous, silky, cheesy sauce to go to waste. There we go. And now that's going to go into the oven at 180 for about 20 minutes until golden and bubbling, and then we'll give it a taste. Our pasta bake, beautifully golden, bubbling, cheesy, is ready for tasting. And Terry's here to come on and taste it with me. Okay, be very careful because it is very hot. Oh, there's so much saucy goodness in here. I'm gonna have to blow on this for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, me too enjoy this video of us just blowing on our food. Mmm, oh, it's so good. It just tastes like that smoky gammon mm. flavor, and then you get the rich cheesiness of the sauce. Mm. So lovely and creamy. Mmm, it is brilliant. Well, that concludes our festive cooking series. Thank you so much for cooking with us this festive season, and we wish you a very Thermomix happy Christmas and a very happy new year. We'll see you in 2022 for more cooking adventures.